Today, we're all about getting you on your way to mastering Pathfinder in Apex Legends. Path can be one of the biggest playmakers out there, and there's a lot to discuss. Wasting no time, let's get right to it. Starting off with a quick overview of Pathfinder's abilities, his passive is nearly non-existent, but he is a member of the recon class, meaning he can ping those recon beacons. Second to this is that every beacon pinged, Pathfinder instantly gets his zipline ultimate fully recharged, and the timer on his zipline ultimate is reduced by 10 seconds for the duration of the match, and this does stack up to four times. Pathfinder's tactical ability is the grappling hook, and this is his premier ability in the game. This is a grapple Path will send out to attach and maneuver himself around in a very free-flowing way. This hook does have a cooldown that varies from 10 seconds to 30 seconds depending on how far he travels and there's a ton you can do with this and we will get to more on this in a moment. As for his ultimate, this is a zipline Pathfinder can send out once every two minutes up to 100 meters away and again you can reduce the cooldown to a nice 80 seconds if you do ping four beacons on the map. That is going to be it for Pathfinder's abilities. They are pretty simple but as we get into the tips and techniques hit that like button as it helps a ton and as with all of our master guys be sure to look at my pinned comment down below for any and all changes to Pathfinder, plus how he is currently doing in the meta of Apex. Legends almost never go through fundamental changes, so I would expect this guy to be relevant for quite some time. But if it isn't, I will let you know down there. And if you are wondering why you might want to pick up Pathfinder or what his role is in the squad, well, he's pretty much an insane movement legend, one of the best there is, and he is really going to be there to make quick plays very fast and very efficiently. He does lack some team viability, but the zipline, I think, is still a little underrated in today's Valkyrie Ultimate meta. Definitely don't sleep on this or Pathfinder in general. Big thanks to the sponsor of today's video, Glitch Energy. If you are looking to get some increased focus to help you play better, get those 20 bombs, or really just want something to drink that is going to give you increased motivation, you got to get it. A big recommendation of mine is to pick up the starter kit as you will get the shaker plus seven flavors to try. And if you do use my code TIMPROVISION, you will get 25% off anything you order. Big thanks to them supporting me and the content we produce and check the link out in the description for more. Moving on, we have a lot to go over with Pathfinder's Grapple, plus some tips and even some gameplay examples, but it's going to be paramount to understand why Pathfinder's Grapple is such a big deal, as having this basic knowledge will help you perform at the top level. On a basic level, the Grapple is great to use to rapidly take cut, gain superior positioning, but beyond this, you can also use the Grapple to escape out of tight spots, to heal up and even catch up to those enemies who may be trying to run away from you. The reason the grapple is such a big deal though is because it has all these capabilities in one ability, plus its movement is actually very non-linear. If we compare it to another great tactical like Horizon's Gravity Lift, she is more or less locked into one spot of verticality where Pathfinder can use this grapple anywhere and off of any object in the game. This freedom also means it's gonna take a ton of practice and knowledge to understand the best spots to use this ability, and so you're not really Really just leaving yourself out there. If you are brand new to Pathfinder, whenever that central cursor turns blue, this means it is in range and you are capable of grappling onto something and to that location. When grappling and flying through the air, Pathfinder will stay connected to the grapple's point of contact unless he meets the destination of the grapple or Pathfinder turns 90 degrees away from the point of contact. As soon as you turn out of its range, you're going to more or less disconnect and you will either fall to the ground or get sent flying. The best way to get sent as far as possible is to break from the grapple when you are at the maximum distance from the grapple spot, moving at the fastest speed as possible and without getting pulled back to the grapple connection point. As soon as you start getting pulled back into the grapple spot, you're going to lose a massive amount of speed and momentum. And this is the biggest thing you're going to want to take care of when you are trying to grapple, you know, at warp speed. My best advice is to think of that grapple like a rubber band. You want to stretch it out as far as you can and then let go of it when it's just about to break or get pulled back together. One of the easiest ways to launch yourself from level ground with the grapple is to do the ferris wheel technique which is at least what i call it this is done by sending out your grapple preferably at the maximum range and then jumping when the grapple does connect which will lift you off the ground and launch yourself you can do this at all ranges and distances but there's a few ways to give yourself even greater boosts it's also worth taking a second to mention that this jump as the grapple is coming in contact with the ground is probably the most important part to know when you are grappling this way you nearly always want to be jumping as that grapple connects to the ground to give yourself the greatest launch possible. When doing the previous ferris wheel technique, a super simple tip to give yourself greater launch is to angle the arc of your
your movement or doing the hook grapple. Basically by doing this, you are allowing yourself to have just a little bit more travel distance while attached to the ground, which will excel and accentuate your speed coming out of that grapple. And this will allow you to travel a little bit further and faster. Hook grappling can best be achieved by doing the previous Ferris wheel technique, but this time you are both jumping and looking to the side as you are starting your launch. Remember, if you look further than 90 degrees to the side, your grapple will break, so the goal is to turn as much as possible without losing your grapple. As you do travel through the air, you can then begin to turn and look back to the center of where you are traveling while continuing to push or turn your body as needed to go to your desired location. Turning to the side is the big factor here, and this slight side turn is pretty critical to a lot of future grapple techniques, and this is something that you do need to learn if you are going to improve your launches. The big thing with this technique and a lot of the future grapple techniques is that we are now making things a little less linear, so quick planning is going to be needed. What is meant by this is that you will need to start understanding your physical starting location, the point of connection of your grapple, and the location or terrain of your ending spot. The terrain is going to be a major factor in how far you can grapple. When coming out of a grapple, launching onto any sort of non-linear ground, or if you are grappling into an uphill type of slope, this is going to be a pretty big problem as you're just going to destroy any movement momentum that you might have had. A nice thing you can do and should do if possible is to grapple into edge sliding or down slight slopes as this will be a huge factor in keeping your speed up and letting you travel much greater distances. This is again why understanding your ending location is a very nice thing to keep in mind. Moving on, we now have an additional technique you can incorporate to your grapples and it should be done as often as possible. This is doing a slight pullback as the grapple is connecting with the ground. By walking your character back a step or two, you are increasing the slingshot capabilities or speed that the grapple will pull you through the air. The faster and more efficiently you can get this down, the better off you are going to be to maximize your grapples. I think it's worth saying that this is probably one of the bigger factors or tips that many new pathfinders aren't doing so if you do want to leg up i would definitely practice this while that pullback method is great to gain some increased speed there's still going to be ways to increase your movement when you are coming out of a grapple when landing from a ferris wheel launch or really any grapple it's highly advised that you go into a slide but better yet if you can chain together an edge slide or two you'll get an even bigger boost to keep your momentum up. You can also go straight from a grapple into a bunny hop to make yourself harder to hit. And this is very effective since your speed is often much higher than normal, allowing bunny hops to be a little bit easier to achieve. And likewise, going into a bunny hop heal or just healing in general when coming out of a grapple is also really effective and it's a really good way to stay mobile while you are also resetting the fight. We now have the super slingshot, super fly, or whatever you wanna call it, but this is a massive grapple that you can do to send yourself flying at greater distances. One way to achieve this grapple is by attaching to an object that is above you, utilizing the ferris wheel technique by jumping when you come in contact, and then also the pullback technique for an additional launch. All before this though, you need to plan out your superfly as you'll be curving your entire grapple around an object, and this can generally be anywhere from something like a 60 degree turn from your starting location to a 150 degree turn. There is certain times where you can do a complete 180 turn, but you're generally going to lose a good amount of speed during the rotation, and likewise, if you're doing anything less than 60, it's not really a super slingshot. It's kind of just like a boosted grapple. The critical part is to, again, plan out your ending location and grapple location to best utilize your ability. As you are grappling upwards towards the object your grapple is connected to, it's paramount to turn to the side and get yourself extra horizontal motion. And then as you move towards the origin of your grapple connection, you want to start to turn your body in line with the direction you are flying. This lets you stay attached via the grapple for longer and also gives you much greater input as to how strong you're your slingshot will be and it helps guide you around that object you are attached to and not just fly right into it this will take some serious practice so be sure to utilize the firing range i'm a fan of the two or three vertical pillars at the entrance as they can give you a lot of options to practice on next up we have the atypical grapple or the non-regular grapple in a lot of ways this grapple technique kind of makes you feel like spider-man as you're flying over your grapple rather than under it there are a few advantages to doing the grapple this way but the basics of it is that it's another way to launch yourself depending on the terrain you are on or the height of the object you are attaching to. The launch of this grapple is also slightly faster, at least at the initial launch, which can be useful, but overall, you might not go quite as far, although it really just depends on the area. This grapple technique is done by pointing your grapple cursor just above or next to the object you want to attach to. This makes the grapple miss that object, but it actually attaches to the object on its way back, and this forces a pretty aggressive pull or 
or slingshot. I'm not gonna lie though, this grapple technique is a little harder to perform as you really need to be a lot more precise than just sending your grapple out to attach to anything. So keep this in mind if you are in a fight and you do need a quick grapple, this type of atypical grapple might not be the way to do it because it is gonna be a little bit harder to perform. Next is gonna be the vertical launch grapple, which is pretty clear cut. This is using your grapple to swing up onto the top of buildings or really anything on height. This can be done by aligning yourself a little bit closer to the object you want to scale and then to grapple to height while jumping and turning your body to the side to prevent yourself from hitting the object you want to fly up to. Again, it's not overly complicated and you can actually get some really insane vertical launch height if you do do it properly. This can be nice to do, but in a lot of ways, it can also be a problem. This does bring us to the technique of manually breaking your grapple. Manually breaking your grapple is something every Pathfinder needs to know how to do and it does have some advantages and the biggest is really that's going to allow you to have better control of your, your legend's location and vulnerability. When grappling up to height or really anywhere, breaking your grapple before you get fully swung means you can't just lightly hop up on top of objects or locations and this is vital to prevent yourself from just over swinging and missing a spot or just keeping your body lower to the ground and not letting yourself get beamed out of the air. You can simply just manually break your grapple by tapping your tactical button once again once you are in the air. Again, the best way to utilize this is during the vertical launch to stop yourself from getting flung too high, but it can also be great to manually break your grapple on shorter grapples if you are just trying to gain a little height or just evade enemies. This does bring us to the short grapple, which sometimes feels counterintuitive, but remember, you do have a shorter grapple timer the less distance you are traveling. Short grapple is to rapidly gain height to a roof to prevent climbing animations or just to get around objects quickly can be done and can make a huge difference depending on the situation. Likewise, with short grapples, there's also the technique of grapple hopping, and this is pretty much just using a short grapple mid-fight. It's done like a quick Ferris wheel or sling, and it's really a good way to gain some alternate angles, evade fire, and force close range enemies to waste some shots. Next up, we are going to have the underswing or underswinging grapples, and this is a pretty situational technique, but nonetheless, it's still a really great tool to have to confuse some opponents. This quick grapple technique is often used by attaching to the ceiling or floor above you and then swinging yourself out and around the edge to gain height or drop on someone. In certain spots, it can be used for massive distance gains, but often I find it works best to rapidly hop up on top of a building or just to escape quickly and try to get a heal off. Now we are going to have the backwards slide grapple, which is again mega situational, but it can be incredible at getting you through highly action packed areas or buildings as this launch is much lower than a lot of the other grapple techniques. This is going to take some planning and practice, but it's basically done by doing a jump and backwards slide while at the same time attaching to the object in front of you with your grapple. This kind of accentuates the backwards pull launch since you are now sliding instead of walking and our launch is going to be much lower to the ground since you are crouching and sliding. Your launch is going to be very aggressive and the initial Initial speed is going to be pretty great and it's going to feel pretty good to do, but again, you're going to be a lot lower to the ground. It's really only good to get through like buildings or if you are trying to evade some close range fire. Since we know that grapples will break when you are turning away from the connection point by more than 90 degrees, sometimes a nice little rodeo grapple, as I like to call it, can be really great to kind of show off or be flashy to your enemies. Rodeo grappling is a technique that can be utilized by twisting and continually looking at the center of your grapple. This will kind of ping pong you around and you will be fairly elusive and hard to hit. This can also be utilized to do a complete 180 U-turn on people to escape in a pretty creative way. It's not always going to be useful, but it's something again that you should have in the back of your arsenal. A quick but effective tip can be to do a fast short grapple when you are falling from height. This is a good way to prevent any sort of falling stun effect and leaving yourself vulnerable for that brief second when you do fall from greater heights. The next tip kind of has to do with grappling and zip lines. Zip lines can be a massive tool to utilize when grappling. If you are unaware, the grapple will connect to any zip line and this gives any pathfinder increased capabilities to maneuver around. Take note though, that while Pathfinder can grapple around zip lines, he will automatically connect to any zip line that he is grappled to. This can be both good and bad, depending on what you are trying to achieve. The big thing with Pathfinder's grapple is to really be creative and think outside of the box with it. It's one of the most free-flowing abilities in the game, and it should be treated as such. Moving on, there's still a few more tips that you should know when you are rocking Pathfinder. First is to not downplay how good it can be to get your ultimate back by pinging those beacons. Not only this, you can have some pretty crazy scenarios where you do set up three to four zip lines to kind of create this huge network for you and your squad to travel around on. And if you didn't know, you can only have up to four zip lines lines active at once. It's going to be pretty rare to actually have this matter, but you've been warned. Pathfinder zip is really nothing too outlandish, so just be sure to use it when rotating, trying to get high ground, or if you really want to just traverse some pretty big distances 
all at once without having to run and if you do want to make up some time. A quick tip for you is that sometimes a quick zipline placement in a vertical nature or even a horizontal nature can be really great to just hop onto it and get away from some ultimates like Bangalore or Gibraltars. It's not always going to be useful, but it's good to know. Any legend can do this next technique, but Pathfinder should make it a point to learn this as they can better get and utilize ziplines. This is to super zipline bounce or jump. When about to attach to a zipline, look slightly up, attach, and then double jump very rapidly to get sent even higher into the air. This is great to gain height quickly or juke out your enemies. If you are having a hard time getting this to work, it's probably because you just aren't tapping jump fast enough. So practice it again in the firing range and you will get this down. If you are not aware, the horizontal travel distance from the grapple will always have a greater impact on how long the timer of past tactical ability is gonna be. For instance, you could grapple vertically, say 40 meters, and the timer will not have as much of an impact, but if you travel a healthy 40 meters in the horizontal direction, it's gonna have a much bigger effect on the timer. Not so much a tip, but an underrated benefit of using Pathfinder's grapple is that you can more or less approach enemies as a complete flying ninja. The reason for this is that when you are flying through the air, you have no audio and are pretty much silent. This lets you jump onto enemies without them being able to track you since you don't have any footstep audio. But you know, Apex doesn't have any audio anyway. Once you do place that zipline on the ground, you should just be aware that there is really very few ways to destroy a zipline. Enemies could end up chasing you or following you on your zip if you are not aware or watching that zipline origin. However, I will say certain in-game geometry can destroy ziplines. Things like closing a door that intersects a zip or the grow towers on Olympus will rotate and break your ziplines. You can also destroy ziplines if you do place them onto breakable player objects like Watson's fences or caustic traps, but it's so rare to actually be able to coordinate this that I wouldn't really worry about it too much. But if you do want a way to gain superior height with no option for enemies to chase you, there is that option. When learning the ropes of Pathfinder, there's going to be a lot of mistakes to be made. The big thing though is to keep persevering and practicing your grapples as much as possible. Utilize the range, utilize downtime when rotating. And the big thing I find when starting out is to try and not rush things. Rushing a grapple can be a huge problem if you aren't grappling effectively. So you're better off taking a second and getting it right when you are just starting out. Pairing a Pathfinder with other legends honestly isn't too big of a concern, but any non-movement legend will benefit greatly from his zip lines. And in a lot of ways, Pathfinder can kind of act as the scout or in-game leader for your squad. I can recommend Octane for starters though, as grappling onto a launch pad is pretty fun. You might also wanna try Wraith as portaling down from a zip line after you gain height can be a really cool way to make a play. Otherwise, I would try out Caustic or Watson too, as they can gas up and fence up the end of zip lines to prevent enemies from chasing or getting to you. Weaponry for Pathfinder, honestly, doesn't matter much, but an emphasis on the close to mid range is always good, as you can pick from range and then grapple onto enemies to finish them off with close range. So is Pathfinder meta or is he not? For pubs in pretty much all of ranked and even arena, he's absolutely a meta legend. Pathfinder's been a pretty solid A to S tier legend for a while now, and I put him somewhere in the top five legends in the game. Just be warned, he does take quite a bit more time in game to get his grapple down to the point of where it's a very useful tool and not a detriment to your performance. If you do have any questions about Pathfinder though, be sure to drop a comment down below or you can hop into the Discord to interact with me, the community, or just find someone to play with. And if you want help with any other legend in the game, check out the playlist on screen for you with all of our legend guides. We've done them all. Till next time, happy gaming legends.